Hello everyone. In this video, we'll look into the concept of OCV timing and pessimism removal. So there are multiple reasons we brought up this topic over here. The first of all, we have learnt about the concept of on-chip variation in the past videos, where we said that a single a logical single logical cell can have varied uh, varied delays on a on a silicon. Basically, a cell which is showing a, a delay of let's say 100 picoseconds on one area of the silicon can show different let's say 80 to 90 picoseconds on a different area of the silicon. And the reason was the fabrication reasons because we have varying uh, uh, it it results in the variation of the drain current the uh, it re results in the variation of oxide thickness and so on and as a result of that you see a difference in the delays of the logical cell okay now what we'll be doing is we'll take up that particular concept and use in an analysis used that particular concept in static timing analysis that is first thing and there is second thing that pessimism removal so when you try to implement the concept of OCV on a timing analysis you see a uh, some amount of pessimism and there are ways to remove the pessimism basically we have to logically justify the amount of pessimism that is getting added and that is getting removed so we will do all those things in this set of videos so first to start with We'll start with the setup time. The, the the very first thing that we'll be doing is to convert the graphical uh, graphical uh, representation of the setup timing analysis to a textual one. For example, this was the graph that we this was the diagram that we had been looking so far for a setup timing analysis. We had this launch flop, we had this capture flop, and 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 the combinational delay, the clock buffers, and so on. So this same thing. We have to convert into a textual representation so that so that things are a, a bit clear when we add numbers over here okay so what we'll do is we'll take let's say we'll take this section and this section on a, a in a let's say a report kind of thing if you try to dump out if you try to write out a report out of this it will look something like this so delta 1 the the uh, the launch clock network delay will look something like this b1 of a this will be represented by b1 of a b1 of phi b2 and this particular net will be represented by b2 of a and b2 of phi and b3 and this particular net will be represented by b3 of a and b3 of phi okay so when we say b1 of a it's basically b1 of a which is it is the net delay it is the delay of this particular net when we say b1 of y it is the delay of this particular cell while taking the next net into consideration when we say b2 of a it is only the net delay the delay of this particular net when we say b2 of y it is this particular cell delay and so on okay so similarly similar uh, representation we will also do for the capture clock also so let's let's do that okay so this was this was the launch and and this is your capture clock so capture clock will look like b1 of a which is the net delay and b1 of phi which is the cell delay b2 of a which is the net delay b2 of phi which is the cell delay and b4 of a which is again the net delay this huge net delay and b4 of y which is the cell delay okay and this net delay will be taken care by the capture by the flop which is sitting over here there will be an amount of delay that will be present on the clock pin so that will be taken care in that section okay so moving on what we'll do now we have the, we have the uh, launch clock network delay representation in a textual format we have the capture clock network delay representation in a textual format let's try to convert everything let's try to convert this particular equation into a textual form so what we have we have delta 1 which is b1 of a b1 of y and so on we have the delta 2 which is again uh, b1 b2 and b4 okay and we have the combinational delay theta and we have the time we have this particular clock period t and we have the setup time and setup uncertainty okay so now uh, let's convert this particular this this particular section into data arrival and data required time so when you add delta 1 plus theta when you add theta plus delta 1 this section becomes your data arrival time okay when you when you do this math which is t plus delta 2 minus setup minus setup uncertainty let's do it over here so t plus delta 2 minus setup minus setup uncertainty this section will become your data required time okay so we have data arrival time we have data required time and once you subtract data required time minus data arrival time you get this slack okay so we won't need this graph anymore because we have understood what that graph means and now we will be looking into the textual uh, way of uh, representing that particular graph so let's add some numbers over here let's take an example to uh, let's take some sensible numbers uh, in each of this section and try to calculate this slack 
so let's say b1 of a the first net delay is 13 picoseconds or 0 0.013 nanosecond the cell delay is is 43 picoseconds or 0 0.043 nanosecond the 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 next cell the next net delay b2 of a let's consider that as 21 picosecond and so on and the conventional delay we have taken over here is 0 0.9 nanosecond this is the this is the launch this is the launch clock uh, uh, side let's look into the capture clock side as well and the data arrival time will be addition of all of them which is uh, 13 picoseconds plus 43 picoseconds so on and that will come to 1.115 nanosecond you can just uh, open up a calculator and do a math for these numbers it will come to 1.115 nanosecond this is your data arrival time okay now data required time let's add some some numbers over here so b1 of a since it's the same cell the the, the cell delay will be same 13 picoseconds and 13 picoseconds over here b2 of a and b2 of y will still have the same uh, delays b3 of a will again have the same delay because the net that was connected to b3 of a and b4 of a that was common okay so it will have the same delay only the cell only the cell delay that is the b4 of y that cell delay will be 83 picoseconds that will be different from 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 the from the cell delay that we have over here because this is b3 and this is b4 okay so b b4 will be having a, a, a cell delay of 83 picoseconds or 0 0.083 nanosecond so now let's again do the math for t plus delta 2 minus setup minus setup uncertainty and that will come to around 1.143 nanoseconds okay and the next point is to calculate the slack which is data required time minus data arrival time and the slack comes up to be 0 0.08 0 0.028 nanoseconds or 28 picoseconds so this is the uh, this is the basic example of any of a, of a setup time analysis and this is how you calculate the slack and the slack over here is positive okay so now the point that there, there is but there is a catch in this particular slack and the catch is then the cells the cells which are present over here and the cells which are present over here they have got unique delays for example a delay of this particular cell b3 is 55 picoseconds only and the delay of this particular cell b4 is 83 picoseconds what we have to consider in case of ocv we have to consider the the, the the particular curve so for example sometime back we had been looking into a curve something like this which said that a cell let's say we'll pick up one cell let's say this b2 this b2 cell can have a varied range of delays so for example if it had a delay of over here it's 50 picoseconds let's say a cell has a delay of 100 picosecond on a chip on a chip it ha it can have a variation of delays it can the delay can vary from 80 picoseconds to 120 picoseconds so this particular variation has not yet been accounted in this calculation okay and when when we when we incorporate this particular variation onto this particular calculation the slack will change how it will change will will come up with will will come up with that particular math as well but the point is we have not been we, we are not been considering the 20% variation of the cell delays in this particular setup timing analysis so what we'll do is we'll come up with a way to uh, to implement this ocv so this ocv curve has been has been uh, discussed sometime back in the previous lectures you might want to have a, a look into those videos where this curve has come from so the next step that we have to do is we have to take this curve and implement on this particular setup timing analysis so what we'll do is that we'll take an amount of uh, the discussion and that will be a uh, that will be a second level of uh, discussion that we'll be doing so let's try to bring up uh, let's try to bring up uh, the the com the implementation of the ocv curve onto the setup timing analysis in the next video thank you